and everything falls apart. Yeah, well, it's it's that voice. I bet she's got a ponytail. All right, well, we can stop being so edgy, Nathan, because we're alive. Howdy, folks. Welcome to Tuesday. It's Tuesday. <laughs> Hope you all had a very nice long weekend for Labor Day. Uh, I did not work on Labor Day. and uh, I, did. <laughs> I wasn't working well. <laughs> <laughs> but we're back Woo. for another episode of TFL Now Live. Uh, and today we're talking about, well, it's it's basically the beginning of the month. So all the manufacturers have released their sales figure information for the month of August 2018. So we're going to go through the best sellers, the worst sellers, and the cars that have made a big change from uh, this, this month last year to this month of this year. And some we can't believe they're still building. <laughs> we'll Not that, that we're having an issue with that at all. No, no, Not no, a no. single issue. Not a Dodge. single issue. Uh, something to keep in mind for this whole show, uh, General Motors has moved the way that they, they changed the way that they report their sales figures. They've gone from doing a monthly, like most manufacturers, to doing it quarterly. Yeah. Uh, so we got figures in, what, January, February, March, we got them in June, and we'll get them next in, what, no, what, what, August? Will it be this month? No, wait. No, next month. But next uh, month. Okay, yeah. October. In other words, we've got Bupkis from General Motors, one of the largest yeah. automakers in the world, yeah, because nothing. they're being... I'd be, yeah, who knows. Yeah. Um, before we get into the list, though, let's talk about Mercedes, because they've just launched the EQC, which uh, is their first fully electric crossover. So uh, they did, uh, we were going to call it their first fully electric car, but that's not true. They did a fully electric version of like the AMG GT. Mm. So there's this big green thing. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Uh, but this is, we've been seeing teasers of it for a long, long time, and now it's been finally revealed. It was revealed in Stockholm this morning. Yeah, i got to be honest with you. I took a look at this picture. I didn't think it was horrible, but I think the Jaguar, which it competes with, is much better looking. This is just me. I mean, maybe you guys yeah. agree, maybe you disagree. I don't know. Something about this, like, weird half circle from the headlights doesn't really do it for me. But... We got some stats for you guys. Yeah, yeah. So check out. it'll have 402 horsepower, which is respectable. Yeah. Uh, up to 200 miles of range, which compared to the Tesla Model X or the I Pace is not quite uh, in on the pace. Same. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't gonna say yeah, it. I did it. You said it. Uh, it's got an 80 kilowatt hour battery pack, and it can charge in about 40 minutes on DC fast charging. Now that's not bad, and and perhaps that's the main part of the technology is the fact that it, the fact that it can charge quickly. It's really fast charging. Yeah, that's that's great. One of these days, this all these technologies are going to mesh together, and we're going to have a vehicle that can be charged as quickly as you fuel up, and it'll get 300 miles or more of range. That's what I believe needs to happen in order to be competitive with a gas yeah, car. I think so. I, you know. Range anxiety is going to be a real thing until every car has 600 miles of range, which that won't happen well, for a really long time. I mean, you know, how much range does your GTI have? If I drive really conservatively, 300, 300 miles, yeah. So 250 miles. But really. it takes me, you know, five minutes to fill it up. Okay, so that's what we need to do is we have to be able to match a GTI. Yeah, we do. Okay, let's move on. 300 miles of range, five, five minutes to charge. That's the... Ten minutes, I'd say. We'll call it ten. Fair. Yeah. Ten's fine. Uh, okay, on to the list. So for this list, we've done, uh, it's not really a top ten, it's like a series of top threes. Uh, so we have the top three in each segment of cars, the number of units they sold, and the year-over-year -year increases, or decreases in many cases. Uh, and then we're also including some of the big movers, so the ones that have significantly changed from August 2017 to August 2018. Uh, why don't we go ahead and get started with, oh yeah, one more thing to note. Uh, it would be easy, especially for the least selling, the worst selling models, to just include like Ferrari and Bugatti and all these weird manufacturers. That because they sell like nine yeah. or something like that? Uh, so we've just gone ahead and sifted through, Zach actually has sifted through tons of sales figures today to make sure that we're giving you guys just the numbers of cars that people actually buy. Uh, because that way they're a lot more relevant than just telling you, oh, Ferrari sold 30 cars this month. Hand built exotic cars don't exactly register on a list like this. No. So. Uh, it's not really worth it discussing because we don't expect them to sell much anyways uh so let's start with the best-selling mainstream crossovers all so, right well it starts with the toyota rav4 yeah, and that is yeah. not a surprise <laughs> not only is the rav4 the best selling in its class it's one of the best selling out there period yeah so uh it sold 44,222 units in just august which is an absurd amount of cars but it's actually down two percent 
yeah. from August of 2017, which isn't a huge decrease, but it is interesting. It is, but keep in mind, I mean, they are right on the verge of introducing a brand new RAV4. Mm -hmm. And that new RAV4 is going to be ground up completely different. Um, it's supposed to have uh, improved drivetrain, di driving dynamics, interior, exterior, you name it. So hopefully we'll be hearing about that vehicle soon because it's, we're TFL, we're in Colorado, hence we need to drive it. Yeah, basically, whenever a new model comes out, people stop buying the old one when they know that there's a new one on the way. So that's kind of something you expect to see. Oh, but keep this in mind. Because a new model is coming out, there'll be discounts on the old one, which is really rare for a company like Toyota. Yeah. But keep an eye on that. So when it's officially coming out, if you want the old model, that's the time to hit. It's a good time to buy. Uh, number two is the Honda CRV. They sold 34610 up 12% from last August. Yeah, uh, keep in mind that this is... A relatively new vehicle so it has the new turbocharged engine which by the way is great it has a new CVT which is one of the better CVTs in the industry and so far I mean everything we've done with the CRV has proven it to be an excellent vehicle in many ways I consider it to be a nicer vehicle than the RAV4 but I think that the RAV4 is still a little bit more flexible and a little bit more off-road worthy considering and then number three is the Nissan Rogue which is not much of a surprise once again they sold 33,000 400, mm -hmm. but that includes the Nissan Rogue Sport. They lump right. those two together. So it's two different vehicles. They are yeah. very different, actually. So because uh, isn't the Rogue the Rogue Sport's called the Cash Kai? So Cash elsewhere Kai. in the world. Yeah, Cash Kai. <laughs> um, that's up 12 percent from last August. Right. Uh, you know the Rogue is a it's a solid a solid crossover for sure. Um, the Nissan Rogue is one of their best-selling vehicles, and actually, if it weren't for the Nissan Rogue, I have a feeling that Nissan itself would be in a little bit of trouble. Mm -hmm. They have sold a lot of them, and yeah. this month is a better month for Nissan, by the way. If you recall last month, one so great. Yeah. Uh, this is actually a really good question from David N. He asks, is the RAV4 Adventure a wannabe off-roader, or is it the real deal? So it's about an inch higher than the regular one, and then they added an additional cooler to it in order to allow it to tow heavier weights. The thing can tow up to 3,500 pounds, which... For a vehicle in that weight class and that size is impressive. However, it is still a RAV4, meaning that it comes with the same tires and the same suspension, basically. So the extra lift does help. On our off-road course, it can do pretty much the entire Gold Mine Hill run. It can also do pretty well in loose sand. It has a really good all-wheel drive system. When you add that extra uh, inch to the equation, you get better articulation, a little bit better ground clearance. So... Yeah, it's yeah. kind of, yeah. It's yeah, a better. it's better. Right. Ding, CG, 499, welcome to the hood. I forgot to mention that, actually. Welcome to the hood is a new way for you guys to support us through YouTube's Super Chat feature, and we have a number of different uh, sort of givebacks that we like to send to you guys, depending on how much you donate. So, uh, $5 or more, we'll write your name forever in permanent marker on our hood of our Mark V Lincoln Continental Jubilee something or other edition. Uh, for ten dollars, you get a TFL truck bumper sticker. Twenty-five, you'll get your choice of a TFL car or TFL truck patch. And for fifty dollars, uh, we will send you a TFL truck uh, hat, which we will sign if you want to. So if you do send us ten dollars or more, please send an email to info at tflcar.com uh, with your shipping address, so we can send your stuff on to you. Uh, but let's keep going. So we want to talk about the biggest mover in the best-selling mainstream crossovers and that's actually the Volkswagen Tiguan which has it's up a hundred and ninety percent over August of last year they sold seven thousand two hundred eighty one of them this past Do August. we have any idea why well, is, there, is there any logical reason it's a so new Volkswagen just started to introduce the 2018 revised Tiguan late last year so sales were just starting around that period. Now it's been going for all of 2018, so it's picked up quite a bit. Yeah, it's, I mean that's significant. Well, and it's a good, it's a good car. What do you mean? Why do we know why? It's a good, no, 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 no. Do we know why? I mean, all right. The uh, car that we're talking about that's uh, another <laughs> crazy one is the Dodge Journey. <laughs> they sold 28 percent more Dodge Journeys this year. In August than they did last. This year. one is most certainly not. I mean, well. Yeah, this is definitely not. It's fleet sales, folks. And the uh, thing is, with the Dodge Journey. First of all, for those of you who don't know, the Dodge Journey is basically a small crossover wagonish type thing that was built yeah. way back in 2008. There it is. <coughs> Pardon me. It's built in Mexico, <laughs> and it's not one of their better vehicles. In fact, even when it came out, it was kind of. Eh. 
And they've done a few things. They put a V6 in it, the Pentastar, which made it much faster and much more enjoyable to drive. Apparently overseas, you can even get a manual transmission yeah, with it. Uh, There's an all-wheel drive version. There's plenty of things out there, and it's a three-row little crossover wagon. Unfortunately, its quality has always been not, uh, not great. Yeah. And they haven't really done much with it ever since 2008. Yeah. And... They've done one refresh, and then they've thrown on a little few things. They, like, painted a little bumper thing on it to make it look more off-roady. And they've changed the wheels and whatnot. But for the most part, it basically is the same car. And it is now one of the older cars that are out there. And it's definitely one of, I mean, Dodge does this all the time. FCA does it all the time where they stretch out a car. Yeah. It's way it's past stretched. its due date. It is stretched. Uh, I got to do this. Ding. Kim Song Tang. Sorry if I butchered that. $5. Hi. Hello. Howdy. Welcome Thank you. Hood. Appreciate it. Uh, I can't believe Dodge sold 7,243 dirt journeys in, in August, but like you said, it, it's fleet sales, right? Yeah. Uh, and actually, that's something that's really imp important to note about the Honda CRV. Yeah. Honda doesn't have fleet sales. Not so really, no. Not only did they sell the second most, not including fleet sales, but they're actually up. That 12% increase is all retail sales, which is very impressive. Yeah, Honda does things a little bit differently. Now, bear in mind that we can say that they don't sell the fleets, but that doesn't necessarily mean that a fleet manager didn't come over there and buy 15, 20, 30 different vehicles off a lot. True. So we don't know that part for sure, but we do know that in terms of, in general, fleet sales we do not know. And another thing, in terms of fleet sales, nobody reports who they actually sell to unless it's an actual news piece. So, for instance, if Hertz or some other rental car company recently bought a thousand different Ford products, they might list it as a press release, but for the most part, we wouldn't know about it, so. Right. Yeah. All right, time to move on to the worst-selling mainstream crossovers. So, uh, number three, the third worst was the Mini Countryman. They only sold 1,548 units last August, or this August. This is the new Countryman, right? Yeah, but that's actually an increase of 13.4% from last year in August. Well, there you go. It's the new one. Um, yeah, we, we, we had one. We, we did. Had, we, yeah. we had the, ele the, the electric, the electric one, yeah. one, which was kind of a... It was interesting. It was a really good car, but it was just like really expensive mm -hmm. for the performance and MPG And, and it's really not a crossover. It. It's more of a hatchback. Yeah, really. it's like a hatchback. Uh, number two, the second worst, was the Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross. They only sold 858. Yeah, true, but they've only recently started selling them. Right, so it's a new model. So we mm. actually don't have any way to compare it to last year in August because they weren't selling it last year in August. Yeah, another uh, one with a little turbo and a CVT, which isn't a bad little crossover at all. It's uh, actually it's just, really good off-road, too. Yeah, it did great off-road. It just has an unforgivable name. Uh, yeah. The, the name, if they had any other name, I'd be much more enthusiastic about it, but, you know. it, Yeah. Uh, and the worst-selling mainstream crossover of august 2018 mm. the fiat 500x they only sold 332 of them this one is called the adventure edition um <laughs> it's down 50 percent yeah that's year. pretty significant pretty big drop in now sales. bear in mind that the fiat 500x is based on the same platform that's used for the renegade the jeep renegade yeah. which does sell very very well the fiat 500x does have a lot of the same mechanicals as well now, suppo no, no, supposedly, they actually are going to update this vehicle and have a new uh, fascia, I believe new taillights, and a couple new goodies on the interior, and I believe a new powertrain as well is going to be offered. But, you know, so, we've, yeah. we've, we've been asking a lot of questions about uh, Chrysler staying a brand here in the U.S., what about Fiat? How long do you think Fiat has left? Well, I mean, they're, they're not selling. This is going to be a very telling year for Fiat, I think, yeah. between, say, October of this year and October of next year. The reason why is, well, for one thing, the head honcho's gone. Now, he was on his way out anyway before he unfortunately passed away, but it was a little early. Uh, Fiat is having some problems. Some of their cars are not terrible. In fact, some of them are downright fun, but they have to improve their quality, and they have to enlarge their sales force. So not only their um, how they sell their vehicles, but who they sell their vehicles to and how they make them affordable. These cars have to have the best warranties in the business. These cars need to have much better quality. Mm. And they need more cars in their fleet, frankly. They need a couple other sedans and some other stuff. And maybe not the 500L. The, the 500L needs to die a terrible death. <laughs> and he's, he should be done publicly. Uh, drawn so, and quartered, possibly. Wow. So oh. speaking of which, David N. mentioned in the comments that the Fiat 500L is for sure on this list. Now, they are pretty close. Mm. As far as sales, but the, but the Fiat worse. 500L, a little bit. The Fiat 500L, 
is not really a crossover. Oh. That's why I picked the X. Yeah, the that's X fair. The X is actually that's a crossover, fair. and the L. You know when they first? You're right, though. Uh, it was David, right? Yeah. David, you're right. When they first brought it here to the states, the L, they tried to market it as a crossover, no. which was utter bull. It didn't go well. No, no, it was crap. So <laughs> what we all saw through was, oh, it's a hatchback that's real funky, and that was basically what we saw it as. <laughs> there was no option for all-wheel drive. Yeah. If there was, at least that would be something. Some more the, people probably would have considered it with all-wheel drive. True, but the X does have an option for yeah. all-wheel drive, and it's actually a half-decent all-wheel drive system, system yeah. right? The the X is sort of an unfortunate thing. You know, a lot of people don't realize you can buy one with just front-wheel drive and get one relatively inexpensive, and I totally recommend it way over the L. Yeah. Way over the L in that respect. So. All right, let's move on to the best-selling luxury crossovers. So we're getting fancy, Nathan. Uh, and the third best-selling is the Acura RDX. So they sold 5,793 RDXs in August, up 24% over last year. Got two things to say about the RDX. Please do. I love the way it drives. The new RDX is a fantastic driver, and the interior is beautiful. They've really just knocked it out of the park. Great, great vehicle, with one exception. The buttons. The infotainment system is one of the most difficult ones to learn. You could go, it's like having a half-blind chimpanzee inside of Apollo 11 trying to figure out how to land it. Wow. It's that difficult. And, I mean, the, the screens and everything else, they don't make sense. It's not intuitive. Right, so it is, you're the half-blind chimpanzee? Well, yeah. Just to clarify. Well, of course I am. And then the RDX. And I also know what Apollo 11, 11 is, uh -huh. unlike you, you young squirt. Hey. Keep going. Uh, number Keep two is the BMW X3. They sold 6,344 of those. That's a big jump, actually. Mm -hmm. Up 117.4% over last August. Now, there's a new one coming, right? No, this is, this this is, is the, the new one. For the X3, this is the new one. And okay. that's probably... Is coming this yeah. Year. It's easy to get confused considering... Yeah. They look exactly the same. But wrong. that's probably a big part of it as to why it sold so many more units than mm -hmm. last August. It's the because... New one. It was outgoing. Now it's a brand new model, so people are buying it up. Uh, and number one is another German manufacturer. It's Audi with the Q5. They sold 6,812, which is a 43% increase. Now your aunt has a Q5. She does. She mm -hmm. does. We recently did a video that you guys should check out yeah, with please. the Q5s. We had uh, three different Q5s, including the diesel mm -hmm. Zans, yep. uh, on the racetrack and had a chance to drag race them and have a little bit of fun. So check that one out. I believe yeah, that's on TFL video. Car. Yeah, it was, uh, it was my aunt's, which is like a, tw it's a 2016 TDI. Uh -huh. And we had a brand new 2018 2 liter turbo. And then we also had the SQ5, which has the 3 liter V6 twin turbocharge. Ironically, the only diesel was also the only vehicle that had exhaust pipes on it. <laughs> they had real God, I don't know what Audi's they thinking with getting rid really of exhaust ports. Fake ones. It, they're, I mean, they're not even uh, fake. It's just this piece of plastic like a, it's over It's like a chrome it's outline. It's crazy. It's no good. Somebody was smoking something amazing at Audi. we got to give some props to Alfa Romeo here. They actually have the biggest increase in this segment. Yeah. Up 526% over last August is the Alfa Romeo Stelvio. They sold 1,271 of them. That's a great driving crossover. Mm. If you guys wanted to get something that was like a performance wagon, even the four-cylinder turbo, it is so responsive, and it's such a fun car. I would equate it to a more expensive version of the uh, Mazda um, the CX-5. Yeah. I'd yeah. say it's it's like it's an in Italian that, CX-5. Yeah, but yeah. with rear-drive bias, which really makes a difference with the driving dynamics. And wonderful car. you can car. actually just get a rear-wheel drive Stelvio, too. Now you can. Yeah, yeah. Well, that just recently uh, popped out. So, yeah, the, good for them. What a... Mm, oh, love it. Yeah. Love driving it. And the worst-selling uh, luxury crossovers. Number three is the BMW X6. They sold, they sold 456 X6s. But that's up 32%. It's an increase of 32%, which is... Uh, mm. little, you know, uh, do you guys think it might be the looks? Here's the problem with the X6, right? Please. It's not as practical as the X5. It's not as fast as the 6 Series. And it's not good looking compared to anything in BMW's lineup. It's just like for the person who wants something different. And I guess there's only 456 people... Who wanted something, something different, different in and... August, yeah, because that's how many they sold. And uh... you, you know, <laughs> wait, you know what's funny? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I gave Zach a picture. The, so the next car is the X4. Uh -huh. I gave Zach a picture of the X4 and the X6. That one was the X4. This is the X4. That's the X4, and that's the the other one is the X6. Um, doesn't matter, but because the X4 is also <laughs> on this list, the X4 is the next one on this yeah. list. They sold 314 of those, which is actually a decrease of 38 percent. But both of these cars, I think we can talk about in the same vein because they're like the same exact idea. One just a little bit bigger than the other. I, I think, guys, I think that the whole idea of a fastback uh, crossover might be waning. 
I think that maybe, yeah. I don't know, that popularity of that it's just useless, like, you know, I mean. It look, doesn't look good. It doesn't hold anything. Oh, uh, no, but nine, this is a coupe. No, it's, it's not. a coupe. Yeah, it's a, it's a coupe. And we're soon going to say convertible, I'm sure, because no. they got rid of the one from um, Land Rover. Land Rover ditched theirs. Don't, don't give them any ideas. BMW is notorious for coming up with niche models. No, no gosh. Like no more Schultz, models. get the hatchet. We're going to cut the top off. Well, if they keep selling like this, maybe those numbers will do the deciding for us. And, and you know, my biggest issue is the fact that, I mean, they drive really good. They do, actually. BMWs are great driving machines, but the, when you take the utility out of a sports utility vehicle... It becomes kind of useless. It, it just sports activity coupes, Nathan. But how can you be even active? I don't know. And they're four, they're you have to have somebody who's computer. you know triple jointed in the back seat to fit because you have that roof line. Uh, Remember the uh, Acura ZDX? Yeah, neither does anybody else because it lasted two years because of that roof line, and it actually looked, I thought, okay. Uh, well, neither of those are doing quite as poorly as the Porsche Cayenne. Yeah, it's this is surprising to me actually. One hundred forty-three sales in August of twenty eighteen, down eighty-three percent. Uh, and this is kind of another, you know, new model is coming yeah. in 2019. Do you think it's the Macan that's doing some of this to it? Uh, it could be the, the Macan is, I, I, I looked one. it up today just because I was doing some research on crossovers. Right. The Macan starts at under 50 grand. Which for a Porsche isn't bad at all. That's really, like you can buy a Porsche for less than fifty grand pretty pretty easily. It's kind of a Porsche. The GTS is that's a that's a quick. That's the a GTS quick car, was a actually. lot of fun to drive. I've only driven one on the snow though. Mm -hmm. Porsche doesn't really want to give uh, any test cars out to our area, yeah. so to speak. That meaning yeah. anywhere in the Rocky Mountains or not Bavaria. Uh, let's move on to the best-selling best -selling mainstream, mainstream sedans. sedans. Uh, so these ones, uh, people have been commenting this all show. It, you know who it's going to be for the best sellers. It's, it's always the same. Well, but no. It's here's usually the, thing. the same. It, yeah, it is. It's totally it's, the same. It's totally the it's same. It's totally the it's same. It's the number three is the Nissan Altima. They sold 14925 which is actually an increase of 2% for them. And it's surprising as hell because this is a really old model that's about to be replaced by a completely new vehicle. Yeah, this is like the one exception to the rule of the new car's... Speaking actually of which, increasing. there was a comment um, saying, "Are have we driven or are we going to drive the 2019 Ultima? I think yeah. we're doing that like really, really soon, right? Aren't we? We're supposed to be, yeah, later this month. Later, yeah, this, later month. this month. So It's he's... probably Roman or Andre. It's not you. It's not, it's not me. me. No. It's, Roman. it's, it's Roman. Roman. Okay. Be sure to look out for a review of the new Ultima coming very soon, actually. as it This is up. a great car. I enjoy <laughs> it. Oh, sorry, that was my Roman impersonation. Yeah, oh it's not very good, is it? Uh, He's trying to show teeth. Yeah, no. He's got good teeth. Uh, number two is the Honda Accord, as we would have expected. 26,225 sales in August, but down 11%. That's actually a lot for the month. Wow, look at Toyota. Down Okay, and then uh, Toyota Camry is the best seller once again. 30,141 units, down 19%. So both of the best sellers are down well over ten percent, mm. uh, and it's but just, it is a year after they've been reintroduced as yeah. new brand new yeah. vehicles. So that is part of it, and the other part is, frankly, a lot of these sedans are starting to lose ground to crossovers. Yeah, I mean the sedan market is well dying a slow, painful death to put it. Well, lightly. no, I, I see. I don't think so. I think it's oh, going to drop yeah. a little bit, but I think it's going to stabilize. I think there there's plenty. There's evidence of that. The there's what? The, the Accord and the Camry were down. Yeah. But the Rav Four and the CRV. The two most popular models right now. Right. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. People are buying RAV4s and CRVs. People are buying RAV4s and CRVs. That's just how it's going to go for a little bit. I think maybe if gas continues to get more expensive, that might change a little. That might change back because gas has been pretty cheap for a while. Yeah, yeah. No, that, that is definitely uh, part of it. So and another thing are... is that some people might rediscover the fact that sitting up high and going around a corner versus sitting down low and going around a corner are completely different it's things. It's much more fun to be down And low. there's a lot of people who will still buy sedans even if SUVs really crush the market. So yeah, that's true. There's sedan people out there. Uh, and then there's the sedans that are really selling poorly. I mean, the worst selling mainstream sedans. So now, now this is a big surprise for us. This is an interesting group of cars, actually. Number three is the Subaru Legacy. They only sold 3,452 last month, which is down 18% compared to last year. Yeah, that's a vehicle that's coming close to a refresh, I believe, in I the next so. couple of years. Yeah, yeah. That's been around for a while. But it only fun. comes with a CVT, yeah! Mm, right. Okay. <laughs> Number two is the Nissan Maxima. Another they one sold, with CVT. They, <laughs> they sold 2,724, down 38%. Now, the Maxima is a funny story. Well, not a funny story. It's an interesting story because we now have a vehicle that really does lose out in terms of performance compared to, say, the Ultima. Mm. And it was like that before as well. Now, it has around 300 horsepower, and it, it's, it's, a, it's a powerful car, and it's, I don't think it's an ugly car at all. 
unfortunately, because of the transmission, because of the way it's set up currently, it's not exactly what I'd call a sporting sedan, even though they tried to bring back the four-door sports car thing that they had with the original or the earlier Maxima. So, what they need to do is completely redesign the car, and that's the rumor. And here's another rumor, by mm -hmm. the way. All-wheel drive is a real possibility, partly because the platform they are using for the Maxima is the same platform they use for the Murano. And, you know... That redesign actually could take a lot of cues from the Altima. So we it know, could. We know what the new Altima looks like. That well, is, they, it's just know. their sales leader. So the question is, do you take the Maxima and go crazy? I think you should. I personally say bring back the manual transmission, and that way at least you'll have a performance version that you can use the numbers for to actually make it look like it's really quick. But, I mean, Nissan's really dedicated to CVT, so maybe they'll find a way to make this thing even faster. Ooh. Make it 400 horsepower, man. All-wheel drive, turbo. 500. 500. There you go, 5. Sure, 20 or 6. Yeah, yeah, mm. exactly. All right, the worst-selling mainstream sedan is the Ford Taurus. That shouldn't be much of a surprise. 2,284 units, up 5%, actually, uh, compared to last August. These people are just getting while they still can. I think yeah, getting while well the getting's good. I'm pretty sure that these are probably heavily discounted in a lot of markets. You should buy a, sh a show, an SHO. Yeah, the show, the, the show was quick. The show was quick. Yeah, it was. Um, unfortunately, the Ford Taurus, personally speaking, if you ask my opinion, uh, you, Fusion's a better car all the way around yeah. and has just about as much space that's usable. And it's not a cop car. No, but if you want a car that looks like a cop car that's really thickly built. If you want people to drive really slowly in front of you. <laughs> get a Taurus. Get a Ford Taurus. And, and make sure it's white or with a little or black. Or black. Yeah. With steel wheels. Uh, all right. And then the one that kind of caught our attention is actually the Ford Fusion. Yep. So they sold 11,286, which is a good number. But yes, it's it is. down 35% compared to last August. Uh, and, you know, both of these numbers, the Taurus and the Fusion, could be indicative of why it is that Ford is deciding to stop selling all their sedans. No, here no. Yet. Simply put, they, they years ago, a couple of years back, they basically stopped development and doing anything real with these cars and set them adrift. And with the intention, I guess, at some point in time, to say, no, we're not building cars anymore. So what you're seeing is what you're going to get for the next couple of years, basically, until they disappear. Let's do some shout outs really quickly. Yes, please. Uh, Car Toys and Games said, Congratulations for 100K subs on this channel. Thank you. We'll ring the bell for that one. Yeah, yeah, we're uh, really happy about that. We tried to hit it last Friday. And we were like, How many were you? Like 70? Less than 100 short. Yeah. Uh, but over the weekend, we hit 100K subscribers. So thanks for the congratulations, everybody. We're, we're super proud of that. It's really fun to see another channel pass the 100K mark. Um, also, Boney Chuck and Chase Younggreen both commented on your shirt. They said, sweet shirt, Nathan. Thank you. Uh, Can you, any of you guys guess what movie this is from? It's actually a reproduction from a specific movie. Yeah, that's all I'm going to say. And name the character who wears it also. It, that's really, yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, let's move on to the best-selling luxury sedans. So, uh, these are the same three because they're kind of the only three. Not really the only three. But no, no, there's others. They're, they're the three most pretty much consistently. Uh, the third best was the BMW 3 Series. They sold 3,751, down 30% from last year. Yeah, that's not a surprise. Once again, uh, 3 Series is in desperate need of a few things. Uh, just like me, it needs a diet. It needs to definitely have a reshape. And frankly speaking, it's a car that's behind the times. Yeah, uh, and BMW has made it clear that they are bringing a refreshed one. We've seen tons of spy shots of the new one on the Nürburgring. Uh, and supposedly it'll be a better performer and more fun to drive. So oh, we'll find out. Uh, we'll find out. Uh, number two is the Audi A4. They sold 3,768. And what's interesting about the A4 is that that's actually up 22%. Yeah. Uh, so a big jump for Audi in August 2018 for the A4. And then number one is the Mercedes C-Class. 4,021 sold in August, which is down 23%. Um, and... These three cars together, the numbers are really interesting because you could maybe surmise that people are leaving the C-Class and 3 Series in favor of the A4. Yeah, you could say that, but you maybe. can also say that they're moving over to the X3 and to and the uh, crossovers. Q4. Yeah, and that's, the, I think, a part of it is a crossover. Yeah. Luxury crossover markets are definitely looking and salivating at the prospect mm -hmm. of getting these spires. Indeed. All right, uh, time to move on to the worst-selling luxury sedans. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Get ready for some really small numbers. Number three is the Acura RLX. 183 units sold in August, up 66.4%. <laughs> it was refreshed. It was recently refreshed, yeah. so it was and they still worse. have barely sold any of them. It starts at $65,000, which is 
a lot of money. I actually think but. it's a decent car. The only thing I don't like about it is its push button transmission. To yeah, be honest the button with you. transmission is. But no I good. mean, the performance is undeniably good. Here's one that I think is kind of a criminal act, actually. The Genesis G90. Only sold 136 units last month, which is down 57%. Yeah, but there's a good reason there's for There's a good reason for that. So, uh, Genesis has made it clear that they're holding off production on any new models until their new dealer network is set up. So, uh, they're, Genesis is a subsidiary brand of Hyundai, uh, and it used to be the case that you would buy a Genesis in a Hyundai dealership, um, and that's how you would do it. But now they're changing it. They're going to make it like Lexus uh, or Infiniti or whoever, and it's going to be actually individual Genesis dealerships. So while they're doing that, they've decided to halt production on a lot of their cars so they can set up their dealer network. Uh, and as a result, they're just not selling very many of them. Yeah, so the sales you got to take with a grain of salt. Um, and the last one is pretty uh, incredible. <laughs> the Audi A8, which sold a whopping 32 units in the month of August, down 87%. Uh, but there's a new model coming. So. There's a new model coming, and a lot of the dealerships that have been around the country uh, haven't even been selling them. And then the, they literally are like, no, 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 wait, and there's a new one coming out. And so yeah. there's just simply a, a supply and demand. They just didn't push it, and, and logically so, because they're going to replace it. Yeah, so picture up on the TV is the new this one. This is the new one. Uh, so who knows? Yeah, Roman is going to California next month to drive it. I was going to say, I guess he's driving that one. Yeah, so... <laughs> Uh, it ain't me. You guys want to check out that video? Be sure to stay tuned very soon in the near future. Um, and that does it for the list today. I think though we have kind of a fun picture of the day again. We kind of had this at the beginning of our show for a while, and we decided right to throw a special one in there, guys. Yeah. So uh, we're gonna lo throw a picture up here. And Good, we exactly. Want, we want you guys to tell us what is that car. Let us know in the comments. If you can roughly come up with the time period, too, that'd be cool. Yeah, the year, time period. First person to get it in the comments, we'll give you a shout-out because that's always fun. <laughs> uh, you were expecting an actual car, weren't you? We'll start doing that, though. We'll start bringing out some obscure cars again, and you know, hopefully uh, you guys will be interactive with us and perhaps even send us a couple that you think are pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and also, one thing we're going to try to do is we're going to start, uh, not start, we're going to answer even more of your questions because we want you guys to ask questions. We want to be able to answer them. So we're giving ourselves a little extra time near the end yeah. to uh, answer some questions. Have we missed anything? Mike K. got the shirt, Fast Times at Ridgemount High. Uh, Jess Spicoli. Spicoli. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Well done, Mike. I'm sure maybe other people have gotten that, too. Did anybody else get That's that? That's really good. Yeah. That, well done. It's a recreation of that one. And I, I just I always wanted one. <laughs> Bowie says Lightning McQueen on steroids. Nope, that is not the Really answer. close. Really close though. Where do you think it got his, his There ideas? it is, Joey Chitwood. Speed buggy. That's the one. It's speed buggy. Speed buggy, roughly circa nineteen seventy three. Nineteen seventy is seventy three? Yeah. Right, the right era. That's well, where there you go. Um, cool. I think really that's all I've got cartoon. for today's show. <laughs> no. Uh, what do you got? I got I got something for you because what you've been such this? a good well, you know. Considering that you had no idea what speed buggy was, I decided to. What do you mean I had no idea? No, you what had no is... idea. Here you go. What is this? A little musical instrument. Did you for give you. me a recorder? Yeah. Does it work? No. No, it's it's a plastic toy. Oh gosh, it doesn't work. I was gonna get you something that blew bubbles, but Roman <laughs> oh, didn't like works. that. Well, I was gonna say play us out on that, but. <laughs> play us out. That's what that was the whole point. You didn't take music in school, did you? The recorder wasn't my strong suit. I'm going to just play some, some actual music instead. Hey, guys, after this is done, uh, if you have other questions, we will be going back and looking at this when it becomes a regular broadcast. Yeah, thanks for dropping, uh, dropping by your tickets. Hey, tomorrow we got more stuff. Stay tuned. We're going to have some fun this week. It's going to be awesome. See you guys. Wow, you're bad at cues. See you guys means you hit the button and the music comes up. That's why I got you the recorder. There we go. That's pretty good. We got there.